Welcome, everybody, to the latest episode of the Two Fish at the Table Poker Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Legend of Ben on Poker Stars. And I'm your other host, East Coast Sam on Poker Stars. And you know, Sam, when I, I used to be a camp counselor many, many summers ago. This was summer something right. here for us now. And one of the, my the most annoying uh, brands or franchises that my campers would have on their lunch boxes or backpacks or whatever was that awful show Ben 10. Because I'm Ben, and here we are discussing our top 10 most nostalgic, memorable poker videos of all time. That's right. We're taking a page out of Doug Walker's playbook today, and we're going to go through and talk about some nostalgic poker clips. Uh, these are also, you know, the videos that may have been uploaded recently, but these are clips and hands that Ben and I have been talking about for years. Uh, some of our favorite World Series of Poker action, as well as stuff outside of the main event in the World Series of Poker. So it's a little taste of what we grew up on uh, and how we developed our sense of poker. Exactly, because, you know, we had, we had mentioned before how we haven't weren't like every season watching ESPN poker. We were in and out various various times of our adolescence and early adulthood. And but really, YouTube was always kind of uh, an avenue for me to watch poker, even when I wasn't directly watching the main event uh, on ESPN or whatnot. And uh, I think that's the case for many other poker fans and players in the world, because uh, you can you can find so many different poker videos that have millions upon millions of views hands that are just entertaining that have stood the test of time that make those main events so uh fun to watch and look back on and so uh really again we so we each selected five uh videos from youtube to uh to watch so we're to, uh, that did kind of be we, we, we'll watch it talk about why it means something to us and just sort of discuss maybe the action or or the the etiquette or whatever is on display in that hand so rather than beat around the bush let's jump right in we'll do a little screen share action here and uh, there we go. So this, first, so we're gonna go alternating Sam, Ben, Sam, Ben, etc. So this first video is uh, one of Sam's. Uh, I've I've not seen this one before actually. Um, I think we'll watch this at at a two uh, x speed. Sam, is that okay with you? Whatever works. Yeah, I mean, you do want to be able to hear the conversations clearly. So uh, All right, we'll do one point we'll five x. Okay, one point five. Yeah. So yeah, just to give a bit of context here, this is a uh, compilation of Andrew Feldman and Andy Frankenberger playing Heads Up at the po a Party Poker Premier League 5. Uh, so this was in 2012. Uh, Feldman at the time was sort of one of the young guns of the game. Frankenberger uh, is also sort of a little bit older than Feldman, had been around a little bit while longer. Frankenberger is still around too. But uh, as you can tell from the title, uh, things get uh, pretty interesting. This video has been on YouTube for 11 years. I've seen it many times. So I'm surprised, Ben, you said you haven't seen this before. Uh, I haven't. I, you know, this, is, this is from the Poker Premier League. And yeah. really, uh, I've watched a couple of these seasons, but it just didn't happen to be season five. I, I've watched seasons like four, six, and seven, but five kind of snuck by me, I guess. So I haven't really familiarized myself with this uh, content here. So... Uh, why don't we get to it and we'll see exactly what makes this stand out for Sam so much. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it won't be, uh, it won't be too hard to guess why I like this one so much. It is a uh, error message here. Wow. What the heck? Yeah, it's frozen on my screen right now. So. Hmm. Let's see if I refresh it. Sorry, guys. We don't normally have too many tech issues on this very low tech podcast, but uh, here we go. All right. So, well, we have the greatest production. What do you open shovel with? I mean, you're never full for 15 big blinds. Look, you just, I just open shovel a lot of hands. Right. But no, with, 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 with really strong hands, I might raise pool. But, but you really have to raise pool this. I mean, yeah. you have to raise pool this, of course. But you're, you're almost better off open shoving it. Yeah, probably. When they made the minimum raise, you can never fold a seven, right? No. I mean, I'm going to break the Frank and move in here. <laughs> picks up the chips and the funny thing is he, he's not even going to shuffle about it. it makes it just a re-raise oh, he's not going anywhere I promise you he's got to play this hand yeah. he's got to just go all in right here yeah. your selfish man's got a Garfunkel again Dallas Feldman has a lot fewer chips than Frankenberger does wow what are you doing well, just, you raise that hand so you can get the guy to make a move on you with the king high and push you in that you know what I mean raise it to fold it is, yeah. it is it what it is is that Andrew's trying to find a, a great spot you're not going to get a good spot with 12 big blinds no, no good spots anymore this, oh, oh, this makes me sick right. it's, I would have had it all in there for sure I would have had it all in there before my opponent had a chance to raise me he'd had to call me you're in New York City. You're trying to park the car. You just, you're just yeah, not 390k, right? The clock's 45, right? So it's 30 
It's 30-15. I mean, we've seen him min raise fold A7, so maybe he's min raise folding. I mean, I don't get it. He had A7 in exactly the same spot. Frankenberger free bear, he folded. He allows Frankenberger to come in this hand. How can he not call 30 no, no. We just call. Oh. Standard call. We haven't seen a flop in a while, but we got one right now. I would never get in the swap out of the Yeah, exactly. There's 120 chips. It's just too precious. Oh, now we're going to We're going to finally see it. Yeah. What we get to see is Ken Feldman hit his flush draw. 20 pick. It has to happen, right? The chips have to go in right now, right? Yeah. Only a Feldman bets are going all in. Feldman always bets this, though. He's betting 70K. Oh, you have to bet. You just got enough flush draw. If you raise it, you just gamble with this. That's all. It's very simple. 55 plus. Here it is. It's going to be the all in. No, he won't. Right. He's just going to make it 110 min raise. Oh, I'm going to bet 100 on that if you want. <laughs> I'm going to 10 to 1 on it. He's called. We got action. Well, Spin, the wheel. Wheel. Spin the wheel. Well, we've seen Frankenberger hit flush after flush to stay alive and win pots in this tournament. Now his opponent needs a flush to stay alive. Can he catch it? And, and you think the, there's going to be a five or reduce on the turn for the triple sweat? I mean, think how much the momentum would switch if Feldman. This is you almost you can feel just the air suck out of Frankenberger if Feldman hits this. But we'll see if it works out. It's still the spade. Now it's not over. I think Andrew just realized that, that he made two pair on the turn. Oh, you can't believe it. I can't see this. Now you think he'd be happy, and instead he looks like he's anguished here. He's got a dodge of 10 or a 9. So guys, double up. Four out. This guy's got 9%. <laughs> and he's sweating up. <laughs> no, you can't do it again. Please. Small card. Just put a small card, please. Come on. Small card. Pitch a card. Anything. What is happening here? Yes! <laughs> uh, <it's a> seven. <laughs> so there you go. Andrew Feldman has doubled up. I mean, just like him standing up and just I don't think like that. Like, like, dude, you need to switch, right? Is the I just sit down and say, "Okay." Played, uh, much better than him up until this point. Oh, it's so, the final table. I thought Tom was the favorite three. I know, but you gotta just. I don't know if you, if you continue. Dude. The Frankenberg seems to get, so coy. I mean, come on. No, well, Andrew Frankenberg's got to be saying to himself, "You know, I've outplayed this guy completely all the way, and now all of a sudden the guy's got more chips than we started this a battle with." And I've gone down a little bit. I just can't believe what's happening. I, I just wonder if Frankenberger's. You know, sometimes you can be guilty of celebrating too early. Uh, you know, he is back huh, in the thick of it now. This is the, the least chips he's had since uh, they started the heads up. You know, Feldman limping in on the button again. It worked for him the last time, but it's not going to work here. It's Frankenberger raising him with the ace nine. Me. One hundred ten thousand. Feldman's been down, 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 down. Now he's got some chips. Surely he's not going to do something foolish now with a 6-4 off suit. I, I he won, right? How strong is, does Frankenberger think the ace-9 is? is? Is Feldman capable of getting him off it? Frankenberger will 100% go with this hand if he gets raised here. I mean, the thing about the re-raise, doesn't it represent such a strong hand? Yes. You let me in. You re-raise, that's what he's doing. He is re-raising here. And Frankenberger could either come back over the top all in, throw the hand away. I mean, it's like Feldman is a different person. Can Frankenberger pick up on this? Because this is something completely different. This is something completely unexpected. Frankenberger's asking how much he's got. I'm not sure. I'm not sure Frankenberger can call here, Mike. It's a tough play. I don't know that you can call. I think you have to re-raise or throw the hand away. He's going to throw this away, Mike. I think he's going to do. When the guy names in and then re-raises it, you do think he's got a real strong hand. Call. Well, this is the wow. last option I thought he would do. Absolutely. Because what's going to happen? He's out of position now. And, and Feldman's going to bet any flop. Doesn't matter what it is. You might have to go all in on the flop. Look, there's five hundred thousand out there. Feldman's only got eight. I mean, you can't you can't make a bet. There's there's just one bet here. I think you can bet four hundred thousand right now, and then throw it away if your opponent moves in on you. I think you have to bet. You just can't give up all those chips out there. I'll tell you one thing, Feldman does not like this spot. What's he going to do? He knows what to do. He'll bet here, and Frankenberg will fold. He's been pretty... very small here. Very small. Ninety-five thousand. And this bet is going to send one of two messages to Frankenberger. He's either got a real powerful hand or he's got a real weak hand. It's one of the two. It's not a middle hand. It's like he's either got three kings or he's begging you to call him with a small bet or he's got nothing and he's just trying to pick up the pot. Oh, my gosh. But he's got, he's got nothing, Frankenberger. He's selling. This film has got less. He's going to make this call. Can wow, you believe it? Mike, wow. It doesn't seem possible. That is incredible. And I mean, it's almost like, I mean, in Feldman's mind, he must think this guy has a king now. It's almost like the, he's, the guy's letting him hang himself, right? Yeah. Doesn't it look like a king? It's incredible he could just make that call with that hand. Now a three comes off, so we're back in the same scenario. I mean, Feldman must feel like if he bets again, he's just going to get snapped off with the nuts. Unless you put the guy on Queen Jack specifically. And then you can move in and take the pot down. He's going again. Well, yes. Folks, you're looking at the very hand that I predict whoever wins this hand wins this tournament. But can Andrew Feldman continue to show heart and continue to bet with me? Nothing. He's doing it. He is doing it. <laughs> that wasn't the most confident bet in the world, but we know he's got a 4-6. That's Frankenberger. Well, I'll tell you why it's such a good bet. 
because he lets himself some chips to move all in on the river, just in case he gets called here. If he puts his opponent on a queen jack or something like that, ace jack, where he might throw his hand away if he moves in on the river. And Feldman has sold a good story here, Mike. I mean, sure? wow. He's now bet this three times. He's re-raised him for, for the flop. He's bet the flop. He's bet the turn. Oh, the we saw from Feldman earlier. What's he doing? We're seeing now, but what's Frankenberger doing? He can well be topped by Frankenberger. Mike, do you know anything about Frankenberger that suggests what? He's coming over the top. He is coming. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable by Frankenberger there. The way he played oh, that. Man. You talk well, about folks. This guy has got it in spades. What Love just it. happened? Who is this guy? He's coming for you. What an incredible hand that was. I tell you, I salute both these players. Both of them showed hard in that hand like I can't believe. We saw Feldman three bed before the flop, bet on the flop, bet on the turn. Incredible. And then Feldman came back over the top of him on the turn. Neither one of them had anything. What poker. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, folks, it shows you it's not about the cards. It's about the opponent and it's about heart that you have if you want to win no limit on tournaments. These guys both have it. Frankenberger, I'm doing him right there to take down that pie. I've asked for water like half an hour ago, please. I mean, this is just not right. Can I have water, please? I've asked about half an hour ago. Well, how long do I need to wait for some water? It's ridiculous. No, but I mean, how many times do I need to ask? It's an absolute joke. You should see the frustration. You're, you're, you're waiting yeah. an hour for that. It's just a joke. I don't understand this. It has to like that, though. This has been a match. A heads-up match. I mean, really come good. on, dude. It's fun to watch. The great thing about watching poker is you can That's learn from the players. Money at the line. I'm going to that here in this heads-up battle here. Well, Feldman's got about 30 big blinds. And my guess is the reason he's he's raised is because he's not excited to get all his money in with the King Queen. Of course, he would have got the King 10. Frankenberger could well come over the top of this King 10. And this could be the three man for Feldman right here. Feldman might shove here. He very well might shove here. I, mean, I think he will shove. And indeed he does. And he's called. And Feldman's got a great spot. He's got him dominated. He's going to be the chip leader. Unbelievable. He can take the chip lead here. And Andrew Feldman, who's been sputtering and sputtering and sputtering, has a great opportunity to become chip leader in this heads up battle. How did he do it? It's King Queen versus King 10. How did he do it? But he has never say die, Feldman. Seventy-one percent now. Don't you believe him, Mike? So nothing. You see the queen. They watch the queen. I know there. Two deuces and a three come out. Queen would help him, but make it Frankenberger a straight opportunity somewhat. And there you go. He doesn't want a queen now. I can tell you that. I don't think he wants a queen now. You want that queen, buddy? <laughs> well, he'll make a straight himself if a ten comes out. So, you know, queen in order for Frankenberger to win this spot, he must catch a straight or two line diamonds to make a flush. Needs a seven or a queen. The board pair twice, they would split the pot. But right now, Feldman well out in front with a great shot to double up here and take the lead. Well, Mike, I don't think there's any. The queen is going to play. I don't think there's any split pots out here anymore. Must be a queen or a seven. The only thing will do it for Frankenberger. Nothing else will win the pot for him. Must make a straight. Has to catch a queen. <laughs> queen on the river. One more time. Frankenberger has made a pat hand on the river to not only win the pot and to knock somebody out, but this time to win the tournament. It was just fate and destiny for Frankenberger to take down this tournament. The oh, way he my. did it was dramatic. The way he knocked these players out of the final table, extra dramatic. <laughs> He's a river man. He's a man with heart. And uh, Andy Frankenberger, Mike. Feldman put up a valiant fight, but you cannot say Frankenberger doesn't deserve it. He has been the man that everybody has had their eyes on this whole tournament. <laughs> Andy Frankenberger, our champion. And uh, I know how much Andrew Feldman wanted that title. Andrew fighting back in tears and shows you how much he didn't want to win this tournament. He knows he's been chipped here. If he'd just won that pot, didn't happen. Still, he played great to get to this final table. Probably not so great in the heads-up battle. And you got to hand it to Andy Frankenberger. He deserved this title. Crazy, huh? Oh, yeah. So, so again, so tell me, what, what, when was the first time you saw this this hand happen? This this video happen? What, what was sort of the? Why was it so significant to you? I don't remember when the first time I was. You know, I mean, again, this was eleven years ago. I would have been a teenager back when I saw it. I don't remember, but yeah, I mean, just just everything. I mean, just the emotion that Feldman shows at the end. How coy Frankenberger is, the water thing. I mean, you know, I've seen jokes about this for years. And Feldman is gone. I mean, he just disappeared after this. So this is really his legacy. I mean, it's essentially just the exact, it's, it's what not to do when you're at a poker table, right? I mean, I get it. There's a lot of money at stake. There's a lot of, you know, the title is very important to people. But you have to just keep your act together. You have to play coy. You can't be complaining about not getting water or whatever, uh, you know, just just it's just on a surface level it's just such uh so much fun to watch and then obviously like frankenberger sniffing out that feldman had nothing is is really impressive too so 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like that it's uh, a good chunk of that heads up battle in that match. It's not just the last hand so that they can emphasize the crying by Felden at the end. You know, it kind of right. gives you the full context. And um, again, I, I'm just a big, I was, I was a big fan of this, you know, Poker Premier League program when we yeah. briefly discussed the Poker League uh, poker scene. Uh, a while back and this just again you it's just a great energy in the booth by uh mike sexton s and peace luke schwartz and jesse may and so again it really just sort of is a good snapshot of why uh that program is so successful and why i think it merits uh checking out yeah and i also wanted to show a little bit of uh poker you know sort of after black friday and this was in 2012 uh, you know, we've talked a lot about how the golden age of poker, you know, in terms of television was like 03 to 06, but there was definitely some good stuff afterward. And that's one example of that. Yeah. And so, uh, so that's, that's, you know, that's your first one. Uh, mine is a bit more of an old school, the uh, Phil Hellmuth, Adam Levy uh, viral hand. Uh, this is a part of a compilation of most iconic poker fights of all time. Um, so it's just, uh, so it's one of the hands in, in this video, but uh, it, it's kind of hard to find some of these hand with classic hands sometimes as the copyright striking and, and whatnot. But uh, this this hand just kind of speaks for itself to help this greatness and everything. So uh, we'll I'll jump right into it right now. Here we go. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen this one. Back to our feature table. Still help us. And we push down. And an H. He has pocket eights. Oh no, I'm I'm gonna do something here. This hand didn't, wasn't very good for me yesterday though. Let's think positive thoughts, my poker king. <laughs> Raised to fifteen thousand. Maybe today. Today's a different day. Today, like yesterday, Phil's face is on twelve million beer chats. On to Adam Levy, Queen Ten. He is a very powerful online player. People from all around the world log on to watch the guy they call Ruthless Play. Well, he skipped last year's World Series, so he could be a he champion. Ruthless, watch, not Ruthless Play, play by the way. Nine six Jack. Pair of eights are still best for Helmuth Levy with an up and down straight draw. Not the best flop for Phil to see, but he bets it twenty thousand. Levy with the draw. Yeah, why wouldn't he stick around with that straight draw? A call. All right, so now the turn card. Turns an eight of diamonds. Levy hits us straight, and that also gives Helmuth a set. That is an unfortunate card for Phil. Phil checks. Phil slow playing it, not realizing how much trouble he's in. Levy will not slow play his straight. That's 37,000. And Phil with a quick call. A deuce on the river. Levy earns the check mark. He's got the straight. It's a black on the river, and Helmuth's got to like his hand. Unfortunately for Phil, Adam Levy's got the nuts. 60,000 from Phil Helmuth. Phil value bets. Yeah, the Queen 10 straight is just almost disguised with that board. I'm not tricky enough to play Queen 10. That's good, am I? Levy's the one with the Queen 10. <laughs> raise. Levy announces raise up to 155,000. Now that raise freezes Phil momentarily. Let's see if he comes back over the top with a set. Phil just with the call. Queen, queen 10. Yeah, Levy with the Queen 10 and the win. Call the raise with the... We called a race with Queen 10, honey. I know, honey. He's some online guy. I have a set. He's supposed to bust me anyway. Call the race with the Queen 10. I think he's from Florida or something. Oh, the race with the Queen 10. <laughs> idiot player. Actually, he doesn't look like an idiot player, and I don't think he did anything wrong with him. This was bound to happen sooner or later. He called a race with Queen 10. How do these players, how are they even still in this tournament? They let him in every day. And I have a set. I know you have a set, Putin. It's just unbelievable. This kid probably won't last another hour. Half an hour, it's not. Nice. I promise. Well, watch. You call the race with a queen and a ten. A queen and a ten. How do these players even last this long? Don't know. It's just so sick. They have no concept of no. poker. It's an aggressive call. Aggressive call? Nice dealing there. Mighty fine, buddy. Mighty. Oh, that's funny. And so while the ad's playing, again, it's just classic heavy comedy that I just, I just love. It's a little bit more. Yeah. Mighty fine. You know, I haven't won a pot one time. They've been just raising me and re-raising me all day. Actually, this is a new dealer. You give me a set. I just sat down. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. Like. Idiot players for a race for the point in time. They don't even know how to spell poker. Like, this kid has all the chips. He probably won't even make the final 200. Can you call Wait, a fly on tie rates? You should have with Jack Four. What do you think the guy's going to do? I call you? Uh -huh. Come on. People. You moved in with King Ten, so please don't discuss poker with me. <laughs> so, again, just, again, I love Phil. It's funny how he's so wrong. I mean, he, he loses arguably maybe the minimum. Maybe he could have lost a little bit less. I don't know, with a set there. Yeah. But, it's just like it's it's the ultimate idea of just how you can play so good get so bad at the same time. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Phil's you know just totally out of line here. I mean, again, blaming the dealer for getting your cards when they have nothing, they're just doing their jobs. Just so unfair. Yeah, and again, Adam Levy. Um, it's funny. The very start of that hand, um, Lon says, you know, millions of people or whatever uh, log in to watch the guy they call Ruthless Play. I when I when I was younger, I thought that that meant that his nickname was Ruthless Play. Yeah. 
like not just the ruthless and then the verb play. So again, just kind of a little fun fact for me there. Uh, and again, there's so many examples of Helmuth um, just comedy. This is just you know, one of the most viral versions of that. So that's why it is, uh, it's out there on my list of most important. Uh, Absolutely. Moving on to your second one, Sam, we have, looks like here, uh, the old Eric Molina compilation. Looks like, yeah. Yep, I wanted to get my uh, my favorite player. You got your, you just had your favorite player in there, so I'm about to have my favorite player, Eric Molina. I'm just kidding, Jamie Golds, uh, briefly popping up in here. But yeah, I know that some people get kind of tired of uh, seeing Golds' face, so I decided to have Eric Molina instead be the focus of this one. Uh, and uh, if you're not familiar with Eric Molina, uh, you know, he's won 12 World Series of Poker bracelets. He's won like four EPT events. He's, you know, 20 million. No, I'm just kidding. Like this is his career highlight. He's done nothing since. Uh, but oh boy, did he put on a show. So let's watch it. Let's do it. Oh, oh there you go. Jamie should be careful what he wished for. Three raised back to gold. Molina flips it all in button, ends up in front of Jamie Gold, and it's fired back. Hey, okay, Nass. Passes in glass houses, shouldn't throw chips. You lose on spot. I'm losing. Who's sitting there with no chips? Losing the fence there. Hey, hey, call me. You want to make a side bet in the last long the tournament? Stop it. Sure. How about you getting this in right now? How much? This is a classy compensation. Call me that. Eric Molina is making a bad 200,000 chips. A pitiful 200,000. Molina is brash. He's young. He's not the boy next door. And that bet forces fold all around the table. Nobody wanting to get involved with that big chip stack here. Hey there. I heard it. I heard it. I heard the swear word. I heard it. Man, man, do not say that word. Don't, don't put that down. I heard, I heard it. Well, like you mentioned, Norman Molina is not afraid to speak up. At 21 years old, he is one of the youngest remaining players, but he's making more noise in this one event than most veterans have made in their entire poker career. I'm again the first one player second. I'm not afraid of all the best. Meet your next pill. Super dads. You got to get ad blocker, buddy. I know, right? I have Ed Blocker in mind. Here we go. If someone tries to mess with my game, then I just show them what I'm about. That's what I want. I want your chip over here. No, you're going to trust. I'm not going to let someone else affect me. I have a goal. Let me finish the thing, and then you can pop. No matter what anyone else does, I'm just going to stick to it. So they can do what they want to try to stop me, but I'll just keep going. And I said, I hate. No, nothing over there. I call I wanted to gamble. I'm going to have to at the table, but don't, just don't cross me. I will love not you out. I call you. I follow through my promises. If I say I'm going to take your chips, I'll take them. I love your hands. But you don't have it. As you mentioned, Vlad, Molina is 21 years old, and he says if he wins the main event, he will retire at the age of 21. Right now, Molina faces an all-in raise from Clint Brotherton pre-flop with Jack 8, even though Molina threatened to call Brotherton down with anything. I promise I'll call you. I call. I haven't looked. Molina makes the call blind, and this is our degree all-in moment. What are you doing? What do I have? Flip him over. Molina ordering the dealer to turn over his cards. King 9. Oh, what are you doing? I have a hundred seriously. Seriously. Right. Right. Molina berating Brotherton for pushing with the Jack 8. Hold blind, baby. Gambling. Now the flop. Five to his king. Molina paired his king. And that all but shuts the door on front of his king. poker. Made the call blind and did the king. Now the turn card is on three, and that means the end of the main event for Clint Brotherton. Molina gets to the degree check mark. I'm, I'm not going to lie, man. But okay. Brotherton's being gracious, shaking Molina's hand. I don't know if I would do the same. Brotherton felt the time was right with that short staff. He goes out in 66th place, takes home almost $91,000, and Molina will collect the rest of his chips. What is he doing pushing with Jack A? If nothing else, Eric Molina is making a name for himself. Does the Jacobs look a little nervous? Sun can move all in with an ace 10 of hearts. Eric Molina made the initial raise with a suited Queen Jack. I would hope you had heard that. Unbelievable. <laughs> Amateurs. How to win friends and influence people by Eric Molina. Jacobs with a slight advantage going to the flop. The move. Now the flop. Three King Jack Molina takes the lead, pairing his Jack. Big trouble for Jacobs. He's nearly a four to one dog. He has picked up a straight draw. Turn card now is a nine. No help to Jacobs. Two. Jacobs can stay alive here with an ace or a queen. Two, two baby. Every card is a blank. Terrible call. Molina wins the hand. Terrible. And Jacobs with a nice run will go home in 62nd place. $20,000, what are you doing in the pocket? What are you doing unsupervised? Third place, George Costanza, the jerk store called, and they were out of this guy. Welcome back to the main event and the Rio Poker Room. Chip leader Jamie Gold is hooked up in a hand, but smack talking leader Eric Molina is Gold's turn to act. 300. He's going to raise the 300000 after the turn. <laughs> back to Molina now. I uh, raise. Got a raise. It's coming up. Raise me, George. Yes. Three raise from Eric Molina. Raise. Might as well put it on. Might as well. Got that much left. Come on. Oh, yeah. There you go. Jamie should be careful what he wished for. Big re raise back to gold. Molina flips his all in button, ends up in front of Jamie Gold, and it's fired hey, back. Hey, don't be an ass. Excuse me? Asses in glass houses shouldn't throw chips. Oh, yeah. 
Excuse me, you're losing. That's fine. I'm losing. Yeah. Who's sitting there with no chips? Yeah. Losing the fence. You want to make a side bet who last longer in the you, tournament? I stop it. Sure. No, no, yeah. How much? How about you get in the same right now? How much? This is a classy compensation. Yeah. Call me that. Paulina well, testing the patience of chip leader Jamie Gold. She's going to fold and stop making time, so. You just got caught, so watch this hurry up. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you Gold will fold. Paulina well, takes the pot. I'll see you at the end. I mean, sorry, no, I won't. I'll be honest with you, Ron. I don't like walking to a card room when this is what I see in here. I, I wish they would take it outside to, like, Antarctica. Oh, it's You're welcome. My hand is over, but these two just will not let it go. The jousting continues. Excuse me, penalty. Uh-oh. Thank you. I did not complete that word. First of all, floor, I did not. Uh, I did not. 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 Take a walk. Adults. I mean, who cares? I mean, that Molina would be set off with a penalty. What's that shouting? Six minutes on the clock. You can come back and talk to him. That is just. Oh, with the relatively young field here at the main event. Think you're just this type of juvenile behavior was bound to crop up under the pressure of the millions of dollars that they are playing for, but that still is no excuse for school romantics. Well, now he can make a phone call and curse all he wants. So Molina set off to cool his heels as we next to act young Eric Molina, 21 years old. He's oh. Jack, and it has been a very sedate and sober Eric Molina today. And he's going to raise it up to 140000 to Jeffrey Lissandro, pocket eights. And he's going to make the call. Holmes will fold. Seriously, I thought I saw you throw that out. It's a lot making a big deal out of a little thing. He believes Lissandro, not Holmes, failed to put out an answer. Heads up to the flop, Molina and Lissandro. It is deuce seven ace. Molina wins the coin flip pairing as ace. And he comes out with another 140000 chip bet. He likes that number. And Lissandro will call with his pocket eights and trailing. Yeah, trailing badly. I thought you threw it out, dude. So, uh, you know, not 100%, but they should check it. Holmes seems uninterested. Lissandro just focusing on the business at hand. Here we go to the turn card with Molina way ahead. Four is no help to Jeffrey Lissandro. And Molina once again reaching for a lot of chips. He goes 200,000. So Molina steps it up and Lissandro steps out. Molina wins the hand. Picks up about 400,000 chips. So does Berlant. There's Dan Nassif, a 33-year-old newspaper account exec from St. Louis. He's got pocket nines. He's going to raise it to 140000 Now to Eric Molina. Six, seven of clubs. Makes the call. Molina's parents nearby, as that always. So you bring the mother out, and the son behaves. The beaver always was in line when Gene Sleeper was around. <laughs> all right, these two will go heads up. Molina needs some help. Five, eight, three, all spades. Nassif pocket nines are still good. That was does On a that straight draw, Molina, that's 500000 500000 And that bet is a semi-bluff at best. That's a big bet. That's a big bet. No draws. Oh, he's got a draw. That's a big bet, especially if you're $300,000. Nassif trying to figure out what Molina has. Molina's got Squadoosh. How much you got behind you there? Seven. About eight. 800000 I think Nassif can safely dismiss a flush. Molina probably would have slow played that. Molina either has a big pair he slow played or a draw. Come on. Nassif now moves all in. He has Molina covered. Molina doesn't have to gamble here, Lon. He still has enough chips to play. When you have less than 10 times the big line, you're low on chips, but he has plenty more than that. Molina has said that if he wins this main event, he will retire, but I think he's going to want to pick a better spot to accumulate some chips. I'm gambling the whole time. Yeah, man. I think you like gambling. Should I do it one more time? Your mother's here. Don't, son. Why the hell not? I call. And this is the degree all-in moment. Eric Molina at risk of being knocked out. Molina berated players earlier in the main event for bad calls. We'll look in the mirror, pal. What's he got? Scott Squadouche. Molina needs a lot of help trailing a pocket nine. Look at his face. Didn't expect you to call. Come on, Trips. Yeah, if Nassif makes trip nines, Molina would make a straight. Four a four or a nine. Molina's best hope. Now the turn card is a three. Pairs the board. Steals some outs for Molina. Indeed, a nine no longer good for Molina. A nine would give Nassif a full house. Eric trying to continue his tumultuous main event run. His parents on the same wavelength. Molina needs a four or he is done. Now the river card. It is a queen. Nassif gets the degree. Check mark as Eric Molina is eliminated in pretty first place. Abrasive much of this main event. Molina went down quietly today. And he'll try to find some consolation in his family. Got caught. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you know, it's it's funny. It's the Molina compilation from 06. It really kind of you kind of intersects with a lot of the other storylines of that main event. You had uh, Jacobs, him and his dad. You have Jamie Gold. You got uh, Antigate in there. It really is a good, um, really, um, you know, uh, excerpt from that entire main event. Yeah, it's a great compilation. And also just Norm's commentary is just on fire. I mean, just that comment, what are you doing unsupervised? It's just that's like a top 10 Norm comment for me. So, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, and, and again, really, for me, the, the, the three things that stand the most, just being, like, berating a player for shoving their last 10 big blinds of Jack Gate. I mean, yeah, it's I wouldn't shove 10 blinds of Jack Gate, but it's a good thing if you're at the table and someone does it, because then that means you're, they're, you can get their chips more easily. I mean, you should, you should I, I would be so thrilled if someone was shoving seven deuce at my table yeah. in poker. So, 
I guess alcohol buzzes it with your brain there uh, in that respect. And then, of course, the Jamie Gold and Molina confrontation is just so classic. Uh, it, 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 it's too bad we couldn't actually see, like, Molina had obviously lost some chips between that other hand and that hand. So it would have been cool to know what happened there. But obviously, um, uh, just a legend, like, just, and then when it cuts to him at the table a bit more sort of mellow and sitting with the shades on, it just, it just, it's so iconic to me of like the old school youngster in the mid 2000s, the main event, just like out of their league, but, but making it deep still somehow. It just, it really works for me. Yeah. I mean, the poker boom was just so crazy that, you know, there were just so many 20 somethings who felt like this is going to go on forever. I'm going to be millionaires. And they just didn't understand how variants work. They didn't understand that. Yeah. You can get lucky for a little while, uh, but you know, you're eventually going to get unlucky. And Molina's just a perfect encapsulation of that. I mean, to just call in with seven, six, when you're just behind so many hands and you're just, I just don't understand that. <laughs> I don't yeah. And again, the 06 main event was, is, was kind of the anomaly being the biggest main event for so many years. And, you know, uh, comparatively speaking, with only 10% of the field making the money, which is 15%, you know, you, you, the pay jumps were, were pretty were pretty crazy. And really, if Molina just kind of wisens up and folds to 7-6, he might have made it an extra couple hundred thousand dollars at that rate. Absolutely. So that that covers, uh, you know, one of your favorite main events, the 06 main event, when we were, you know, ranked those. Uh, my next uh, video here is uh, the classic uh, aces versus aces versus king's hand from the a uh, preliminary event in the 07 World Series of Poker with, uh, again, my guy Helmut, if I had to put him in there list there again, I couldn't help myself. Uh, again, it's a couple guys that uh, we've seen an, uh, parallel to other players in other events. So here we go. Eight handed at this $3,000 no limit hold on the final table. Brett Ritchie with pocket kings is going to raise it up to 80,000. Brett could use some luck here. To Beth Shack. There's one ace. She's got luck. She got pocket aces. Okay. okay. Doesn't bode well for Brett. Beth's trying to figure out um, how much she wants to raise. We know she likes to go all in with Ace Queen. I'm all in. She goes Hidey Ho. <laughs> that means all in. Now to Phil Helmuth, who has the other two aces. All in. And he moves all in. Oh, pocket aces all in. Got three other players out. Just action right. back to Brent Ritchie now with pocket kings. Chop off my poor little boy. One quarter second it caught. Minutes she said all in, all in. Quarter second, I was all in. Quarter one quarter second. of a second. No, one quarter of the second. I'm one quarter of a second. Like one quarter of a second. No, oh, Richard's on. Action is still to Brett Richie to the side. I'm insta folding after I hear this. I mean, come on. That's wrong. Look at this. There's Bill's 80. Flash and size. There was the dam. Good influence, Richie. Yeah, I'm all in. But he has got to move all in. This has to be our degree all in moment. You know, Phil's fold there. I mean, come on, look at that. She was deciding for his turn at life right there, and the poker bat was glance handing. And Beth Shack was out of order, too. See, I got it. Everybody's out of order. So, bottom line is both Phil Helmuth with aces and Grant Richie with kings are at risk. Beth Shack with aces has them both covered. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And when I had a lot of chips left, I guess he should have figured out one of them had aces. I wouldn't have. They were helping him. So, Shack with the two red aces. Tell me if it's two black aces looking for action. All the aces are gone, but Richie knows there's two more kings left. There's like a three ring circus in here. And Phil Helmuth is always on two of the rings. No, this tournament life is at stake as is bracelet number 12. <laughs> Come on, Phil. Go back to the tail, buddy. Seven, two spades. Oh, if a runner, runner spade comes, I mean, Phil Helmuth would launch himself into order. <laughs> he has the ace of spades, of course. Richie still looking for one of the two kings. Turn card now. Eight of clubs. Oh, well, we're almost certainly going to have a split pot here, and that would eliminate Brett Richie. The king of hearts. Brett will need a king and a king only, or he is wham loser. River cards or a clubs. And it will be a split pot, and Brett Richie will be eliminated in eight plays. Sorry. and Shaq get the double degree check card. <laughs> Beth Happy, her dead ace is held up. <laughs> All right. Dr. Drew. So, again, why this hand is so important to me is because, A, I love Phil Helmuth. Uh, B, uh, it's just kind of before I knew Brett Ritchie would be in the main event in 2013. Knockout Greg Morrison had that probably the best poker rap up until uh, Papa MC from Rico uh, Lococo uh, years yeah. later. And uh, I did not even know who Dan Shack was when I first saw this hand. I didn't realize he was, you know, such a relatively, you know, high roller, big name in the high roller scene. Um, until years after I saw him, just kind of, I thought he was just kind of a husband, you know, like whatever. He's not really right, a yeah. So uh, it's just kind of fun to, to look back on this and, and have a new sort of uh, angle at, at who was involved in this hand. 
Yeah, it's a fun hand. I mean, again, I, I'm folding the kings. I mean, it's just like you have Shaq jumping up and down. You have Helmuth jumping up and down. I mean, you got to just get rid of the kings there. I mean, Burridge is a better player than me for sure. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a sick spot. Uh, you know, kings versus kings versus aces would be a sicker spot. You know, like maybe on the main event final table bubble, but that's never happened. But uh, uh, you know. that sure, that never happened. No. Yeah. And now uh, this, that actual final table, uh, was broken into two episodes. You can watch it on Pogo if you're really, really, really inclined to. And it's really kind of like the the journey of the the short stack helmet. It's going from like ninth with nine left to getting to like I think sixth or seventh. Like just sort of skating by, like making some sick plays to double as like three big blinds, six big blinds, and stuff like that. So it's pretty entertaining too, even though it goes out relatively early in the overall you know rankings of things. But uh, it's a really crazy. And again, anytime you have multiple pocket pairs, even if they're not, there's no, there's no order. You know, tens, queens, aces, whatever. It's just always dramatic. And this is again a more extreme version of that sort of scenario. Absolutely. All right. So uh, going on to number three on your list here, we have uh, your boy, uh, your favorite Morgan Stern in the world, Anton Morgan Stern. Okay. I think and, he... uh, here we go yep. for uh, this is part of the top five. Got it. Hand. Pocket aces. Who I saw walk by at the, the main event in Las Vegas. Morgan Stern now on the button, the chip leader. Eight seven off. He's been experimenting with different diets, vegan for a while. Then he went to a plant-heavy diet with some juicing, and now it's a steady diet of super aggro play on the button. <laughs> he started playing live poker a couple years ago. A re-raised to eight fifty from Morgan Stern. Back to loosely now as the blinds fold. I warned Sylvan about Anton, but he has the proper tools to deal with the big stack bully in this hand. Please. One point eight. And he says re-raise. He makes it a million eight. We talk often about shifting fortunes when big hand meets big hand. This is just big hand versus eight seven. And of course, Anton could just take his eight hundred fifty thousand chip loss and move on with his other twenty three million chips. Morgenstern is not moving on a lot of those lavender chips, Norman. Wow, he repops it to three point eight million. Lana takes a special maniacal chip leader to five bet with eight seven off. I think we're safe here, Lana. We might want to see cover. <laughs> with the aces, Lucy says all in, and Morgenstern has to give it up. Lucy with a huge pot. The bad timing award already been decided for this hour. This guy's got a different way of saying folding everyone. Oh, good boy. Uh, Anton does that five more times. Goodbye. Big Stack's got to play bully, but sometimes they get caught. All right, not too bad, right? Not too bad. So again, so what? So what? What prompted you to want to include this on your on your five? Video? Well, one more hand. Oh, next one. Sorry. Excuse Boom me. is not the word we would use to describe this hour of Anton Morgan Stern's poker life. He's taken some serious blows to his chip stack here with ace jack of clubs, a raise to 325. The name of Anton's poker movie is just raise. <laughs> exactly. Mark Newhouse on the button with pocket deuces makes the call. JC Tran in the big line holds, as does McKeel of Brimmel House. With Morgan Stern spewing chips, no reason for Newhouse not to play a pot against him in position. These two clashing again. Here's the flop. Oh my goodness. Deuces full for Newhouse, while Morgan Stern flops trip aces. That's a flop like they used to make him a lot before everything got digitized. <laughs> no slow play for Morgan Stern with his trips. 425. Yeah, if you're Anton, nobody ever thinks you have a hand so when he does have a hand he's gonna push with it but newhouse has the hammer with a full boat yeah, and if newhouse knew anton had an ace he'd be twerking at the table <laughs> newhouse has had morgan stern's number today this could get very very ugly just a call from newhouse turn card tray of hearts no threat really to morgan stern's hand from his mind at least he continues to lead out and why not 750 newhouse loves it and he's wondering how to proceed to get the most chips out of this pile oh. Add blocker, get add blocker. Why are you? Mark Newhouse with a flop of his main event. And now he pounces, a raise to two million. Newhouse waits no longer, and boy, he's got Morgan Stern with the perfect hand to carry on and lose more chips. Anton wondering why would Newhouse raise here? Maybe a stronger ace, but that's unlikely. And it looks like he sees no good reason for that raise as he re-raises to 3.9 million. This pot is swelling, and we're not nearly done yet. Friends of Mark Newhouse wondering what their man has gotten himself into here. But Newhouse certainly knows. How much more can he get from Anton? Oh, he says all in. Well, now alarms have to go off in Anton's head. Newhouse willing to risk it all? What can Anton beat? And a call here would be for more than half of Anton's remaining stack. And a call it is. And a stunning turn of events, one card from reality. No emotion from Anton, but he's got to be dazed and distressed. Morgan Stern can still bust Newhouse here with an ace, jack, or three. But Newhouse, one card from 22 million chips, and the main event lead, the river card, the four of clubs. Newhouse completes another double up through Morgan Stern. Morgan Stern had 29 million chips earlier on day seven. He now has five million, and Newhouse now has the most chips in the room. What do you say about this? Game? All right. Crazy. Two hands there. Uh, again, one of the most successful portions of that main event, of what we agree was, again, one of the weakest ones from that era, uh, being the 
more concerned blow up. So again, tell me what about about this sort of uh, slice of more concerned day seven hell was so uh, big for you? Well, the the whole blow up is big. I mean, these were the two hands that were on YouTube. Uh, there used to be a compilation of the whole blow up, but unfortunately, just these two hands. Yeah, I mean, I when we got the Poker Go subscription, I immediately wanted to see two things, and that was Scotty Wynn's blow up in 07, and then Morgan Stern's blow up here. I mean, this guy, I found a blog post written, I think, on Poker Star's website that it was some writer saying that Morgan Stern's going to win the main event. You know, we should all just give up. He's going to win. Uh, I mean, everybody, you know, thought that this guy was going to be the main event champion off of this. And it's just a reminder that in poker is just very strange and that it can all go away from you so quickly. Yeah. I, again, I, I, Newhouse himself is also such a great story that, that of course, that may have been the first half of that sort of two year uh, narrative in the, in the main event history. Uh, and again, it just, you have to wonder, you know, it, that, that second hand, the ace jack against the deuces, it's, it's less big of a hand if he hadn't lost the other, you know, eight ish million chips he had lost in the earlier hands. If he, you know, mm -hmm. if you excise that, he would still have a healthy like 20 million chip. I mean, not 20 million, like 18 million chips and down, but maybe at that point, you know, with that, that kind of bullet to the, to the gut, maybe he changes things up and maybe he really lasts longer. But uh, unfortunately, you know, when, when you're going down the ab, when you're avalanching down the cliff, it just can sometimes be really rough for you. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big believer that, you know, the reason why players lose tournaments, it's often not because of one hand, it's because of a lot of hands that set them up for that downfall, right? And I think Morgan Stern's, as you know, the, the Sylvan Loosely hand, you look at it and it's like, all right, you know, he lost a few million chips there, but he's got plenty. You're not thinking like, oh, this is going to happen next, and it happens, so. Yeah. Absolutely, and so, again, great, a great, a great uh, part of that main event. Uh, my next hand is not part of the main event. This is actually the the infamous Jamie Gold Sam Farhad negotiation hand, uh, but this one is actually the run it back version with Scott Seaver and Renko, uh, because I couldn't find the just the, the plain version on YouTube. But it's kind of funny. We're, we're going to be talking about two guys talking about a hand where a lot of guys are talking. So uh, here we go. I didn't know I was losing this poker game. That's what I was thinking about the great big heck of it. <laughs> that that is the greatest line of all time that I still use to this day constantly. Uh, if there's ever a time to shut up during well. a perspective, it's probably this moment. So let's listen in on what's about to develop. On my own, this is my you know, there's Doyle's stand dues, and I have this is my favorite. I forgot he libertarian. Should we get favorite. it over now or tap that? Depends on your hand. Should we get it all in now or later? It's too much money for all of it. Let's see some gambling over here. You know, let's see a big one. It's too much money for all of it. Let's see a dark bet and a dark raise. Let's see something like that. <laughs> dark bet. I'll, I'll, I'll bet it in the dark if he checks. That's a price for Jamie just called. 10,000. I love you guys. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe I'll bet dark too. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You can raise. Jamie checked dark before the flop. Let's see how bad that Jamie's taking a raise. He's not brave enough. Wait, wait, but how would the action go then? We have to see the turn. No, no, no. You have to call dark if I just call, we see the turn. Oh my god, it's, this is just already insane. Like it's also, already unbelievable. Right. And the beauty of this moment is, and I looked this up, this is the first hand off the deck. They just yeah. started playing on the session. No kidding. And they're like yeah. thousands of blind seats. They're like oh. unbelievably. Oh. And they're both so aggressive and they're both so crazy that they both think, well, I mean, of course, you know, Sammy has aces, but Jamie Gold has aces also for you know all he cares. Yeah. They both think the other must have like seven three offsuit. <laughs> Jamie thinks he has the best hand, and he's trapping Sammy. <laughs> so just to recap here, we have a blind check, a blind bet of 10K, and a blind check race of 30K. I mean, th this after just calling pre-flop as well, Jamie calls pre-flop, then check raises dark, which is just so much more exciting than <laughs> raising pre-flop. How often in your entire poker career have you check raised blind? Never. I definitely, uh, it might have done it once, actually, because of this hand. <laughs> I'm, addressing, I'm addressing the nation and the world right now. If you can if you can tell me a story of a blind check race in honor of this hand, or if you've never done it, and if you get a chance to do this in the future, send me your hand history, or, or send me the you video. Do it, I'll send you some Pokemon merch. I'll make that happen. This, this is if you're in Vegas, you got to do a check raise blind. No flat. Re-raising. Re-raising. Boy, send me his plan to the hell. Oh, my God. Wait, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be back. Hold the deck. Stop the camera. That is so sick. Is this game here every day? Why can't this be here every single day, Mark? This is good TV. It's a great TV, though. Sick versus sicker. What? I don't understand. Wait, and you know what? I'm going to tip the dealer in advance. You're going to come and dumber. I don't understand. What happened to race with number two? You think, what do you think I have? I have, I have the hand. If I call, that means the flop is there. And we can see the turn. Yeah, we just see the turn. We can move all in. We can move all in now. You got involved. You're a sick man. You always get to see the flop. Sammy Blahouse calls me a sick man. Always a flop. Well, and the turn, if you call. Because it was a pre, pre well, well, I'm trying to exactly. So, how much is Sammy thinking right now? Like, how am I going to get his whole stack? Do we just go all in now? Like, 
Sammy's really trying to act here. He's going to go a little over the top in like a minute, but right now he's really trying to keep it together and be like, wow, what crazy action. I don't know what to do. Oh my God. It's funny. There's something wrong with his hand. <laughs> and the problem with his hand is that I raised before the flop he just called. And he's doing a show right now, and I know he's weak. And I know how he's But he's committed the flop. I might have a okay. flop. You got a problem with your hand, buddy. Because you didn't raise me. But you made a statement. <laughs> the eyes go straight off. <laughs> I mean, this is as close to the Godfather as we're ever going to get in poker. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can fall too. But you know, I don't think you have a hand. I don't think you have a hand. Because Vito Corleone and Jamie Gold is there. I have something. I have something. I have something. Do you think Jamie thinks he has a best hand? I feel in that moment, Jamie has just gotten terrified. Right. That he might like, lose all his money. You can't have something. If you, you know what I mean. I'm saying, like, I have a hand. I have a potential. I think. I bet 10. You bet 20, 20 more. This is for TV. The funniest part to me at this point is that Sammy can just say, let's just see a flop. Let's just, yeah. you know, let's just, let's just, and it, meanwhile, he's contemplating this bet, even though, like, we haven't even seen this. Yeah. <laughs> he's allowed to choose no action and see three cards. Okay, I'm going to risk it. No, we're going to get a stark re yeah. Yeah. Sammy. Well, uh, I mean, no, really? it's not that. It's that you don't have a hand. I'm betting against wait, you. Wait, wait, wait. It's like when you play this with the aces to me? Well, I have a hand. Sammy. You probably have a hand. I have the aces. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in deep. I'm in deep. I'm in deep. I'm happy with it. Sammy. Jamie, don't hit the Oh my god, Sammy. I can't go away now. Now we just now what happened? We just see the turn. If I just call it. Yeah, we're playing the flop, right? So he puts the flop. And then the turn. Yeah. Flop and turn. Sammy, you're playing. Have you ever forgotten what street you're on? Like seriously, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. You were playing me with the aces the whole time. I can see the flop. That's fine. Now we gotta see the turn, right? Yeah, we have to. We have to. Do anything, I'm not doing to you. You did it to yourself. I mean, I bet <laughs> One of the greatest lines of all time. Which applies to a lot of Jamie Gold moments. Like, you did it to yourself. Yes. I checked. <laughs> <laughs> I may have a set, so don't be upset. I'm not upset. <laughs> I'm upset. That could be a t-shirt. I may have a set. Don't be upset. I feel at this point, every single person at the table knows what both of them have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Including the two of them. Right. Oh, I got you. I got you a lot of money. Check it down. Wait, I got a lot of money. I probably might have to do that. I don't know. I have that much. Check it down. Wait, that's because we're like, opportunity. he's begging for the <laughs> Exactly. This high level negotiation that I want for a while. We'll be back. <laughs> I bet he knew I was going to this poker game. That's why I was thinking about it. Right? Beat the heck out of me. So good. Uh, I mean, it's just insane. And I mean, it can only happen with these two guys, right? I mean, nobody else. Would, if this was the really? uh, yeah. with Fondiari, it couldn't happen. Oh my god! I mean, you talk about players in twenty twenty being slow. This hand is taking like eighteen minutes. Oh yeah, okay. this hand is unbelievable. It goes for hours. I believe you. That's the funny part. That's the funny part. I believe you. I, I like you. You know, I like. You. I like you too. But I'm moving so much. We're playing. Come on, get down to me. I don't like you. I'm taking my time. That's just like. You can't blame me. Well, I'm losing, and the guy is crazy. This check, Sammy. <laughs> Begging it out. No, that's. I want to protect my hand. I want a better hand. I have to. I have to call you. Why? <laughs> you call you. Oh, sorry, Sammy. I'm trying to win it. You don't have to. Is this the moment where Jamie Gold could have folded his kings? Yes, of course. <laughs> like, Three thousand short. I'm pretty sure that yeah, any card but a king, or possibly a queen, comes off on the river. I Jamie's going to win it. I called you already. Jamie's calling. I was telling you that I have a monster. I'm trying to. Wow. Hold oh, this. Let's see what well, Jamie. You want to get away from it if an ace comes on? So they're checking down now. I'm not calling. Only put in two hundred thousand. Oh my god. Well, it's, it's the river. Do we want to hurt each other or no? Well, it's not that. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's the river. It's not going to make any difference. It's just either you make your hand or I'm going to win. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, Moria Skandani is, is yelling against the dealer through his earpiece, do not deal the river until they're done talking. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no difference. Just here. the poker. If I have nothing, I'm not going to pass, right? Do you, want, do you want to get all the money or do you want to check? Come no, on. I don't want to get it. No, maybe at the end I want to block it. Fine, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's get the end. I'll block you. What are we waiting for? I said, wait. You can't wait, right? You can't bet anymore. I called. Ah. He forgot that they're not dark then. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then you go. <laughs> I go anyway. I check. I don't think you got this. I do, Sammy. I'm calling. Whatever you do, I'm calling. I call. Go, call. I can't. I'm not playing. You think I'm laying down my hand after putting in $200,000? You think I'm laying down my hand? So whatever you got. I got you beat. I want to throw my hand. So then check, check. I have you beat. Why would I check if I have you beat? Yeah, I call. I call. Let's go. I call. It's not binding. I know you're not calling. I call. Sammy bet. Sammy, I call. You don't have enough to get me off the hand. I put in too much. I can't fold. I understand. So just bet. I I'm call. losing. Mark your hand. Because I can oh, I, 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 I bet. I call. I bet. I call. I call. I call. I call. I call. I want to count my money and put it there. Can I do that? Or you can buy me too. I'm calling. There's no chance I'm folding. You think I'm folding after all this? Of course not. All right. So bet me. You want more money? Take it. It's not that. It's I have to bet my hand. I'm losing too much. Wow. Am I, that? I like you. Mark your hand. I like you too. I can't mark my hand. It's too late. You have to mark it. It's too late. I have the best hand. You don't. Okay. I like you. Mark your hand. I like you. Unreal. Also, instead of just saying all in, Sammy's like just slowly counting all his chips. 
because Sammy is so happy right now. He just wants this moment to go forever. I, I like you too. I thought we should just check it because it's enough already. What do you want me to check it? I told you we should check it from the turret. <laughs> he is like, where am I? What planet yeah. is this? I know you have ace. It's enough. I'm saying this. I'm 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 not, I'm I'm not, I'm I'm not, I'm I'm understand because I like it. I know, right? I know, but I can't get off of it. What am I going to do? I understand, but somebody else, I'll tell you. I could also... And I know you're calling. Uh, of course I'm calling. Yeah, but I want you to call. You understand? Why? <laughs> of course, I didn't think he had a game. But I understand? Uh, I want you to call. I, of course. If I had two jacks or... Yeah. Queens, I'm folding. I, I can't fold the king. Jamie, you saved 185,000. You, uh, you played well. You owe me. Just remember what you owe me. Because you know I'll bet aces anybody. I don't care. And I know it's good. Everybody else would have lost another 185,000. The whole right world. Huh? I wish I would have. I mean, that's true. James talked about it. It's a flap and a half time. This is unreal. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. Well, again, just so quickly for me. So, why this hand meant so much to me is A, Jamie Gold, I knew was your favorite player. So, obviously, seeing him in the fray is just great. And Farha, again, he was a part of one of my favorite episodes of all the time, the day one Negroni Farha episode no 05. So, again, just kind of seeing those two in one hand. And again, it's just, it's just such a crazy game on so many levels that, uh, you know, even though it, it ends with the Principal outcome of Jamie Gold handing up, handing over some of the six million that he had from from his 06 win over somebody else. It's just for me, it's a classic. Yeah, and speaking of the 05 main event, I guess we could just get into the next club. I mean, I love this hand. I don't know what else to say about it. You kind of hit it all. Uh, we have Scott Lazar's blow up in 05, which was really like the first big blow up in the main event coverage. And this is also run it back because uh, they don't have it on. They don't, for, for whatever reason, Poker Go doesn't have the Lazar compilation online i think they should uh but we also get to hear a nice story from joe about his relationship with scott lazar so i mean i want to remind people yes yeah, scott lazar had this big blow up but he's a he's a perfectly nice guy no scandals no nothing there and so joe gets to talk a little bit about that so here we go um all right so the, the event is progressing it is still it is still very dark in the room and you said it was very hot in there as well it's probably mm. added to the uh, to the feeling of that final table um when you're the player at the final table who's sitting on a small stack, um, does it make life easier or does it start to frustrate you over time? Ace five in the muck. Uh, All right. Total, uh, totally fine fold. Right? Totally fine. Oh. Oh. I just, God damn it. You, you can't. Oh, this, this is incredible. Let's talk about this. All right. Let, let's listen in. Our players in the hands have a pocket ace. Black looking for his pocket eights. Both players check. Now the turn up there. Cody Lazar oh, lost his mind after his hand because he folded ace five, didn't call. And he should have called the raise pre flop, sure. But in his mind, the stress of the moment made him believe that he's going to win all these ships off Andy Black. But he wouldn't have won anything off Andy Black. How much How much can Andy Black put into the pot with a better race? Right? Yeah. And Ooh, that's right. this hand set up what, what happens in the next two hands, which is insane. This is insane. Oh. I mean, he would have won a little bit, but, you know. He's got a pretty good point. hand in that spot. Next one sent a million chips over to Andrew Black in that hand. Scott Lazar had a chance to pick up a lot of chips, but then a folding one would have been fine. Some chips. So, you know, you, you and Scott Lazar have, have had a bond, and there, there was a story written a couple of years ago when Scott visited you in Australia and you were trying to help him out. Um, You know, what, what was it Was it sort of the poker that ultimately didn't work out for him, and, and how do you sort of look back on, like, your relationship with him and how that sort of developed? Uh, Scotty and I became quite friendly. I mean, he was a, he, he had two kids about the same age as two of my kids and we spent a lot of time together and uh, 08, the GFC really screwed him. He lost his house, his business went under, he was, you know, trying to make a movie at the time from producing him and the poker wasn't going great uh, and he went down as well, you know, he went down a hole. Um and we, we stayed friends the whole time and finally I just pulled up in and I said, come live with me for six months. Let's get you out of this, you know, oh, go watch this. Bit of the hand. Pause it so I can finish my story. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So I brought him down here. He stayed with me, worked in one of my restaurants. Just lived, you know, spent that time training, exercising, dieting, living, you know, away from that LA life. And it really changed his life. You know, I'm, I'm very happy to say that he's, from where he was to where he used to years later, he's on top of the world. Wow. He's, he, he lost over 100 pounds. He trains regularly. Um, he eats well. Uh, he looks after himself. You know, and his attitude is so much better, like for the future, for himself. And he's, he's a guy that's just all heart, you know, just all heart. And um, he's also the sort of friend that he would jump in front of a bull for you. So he's a good guy. And to me, seeing that change in him, that he didn't even think was possible. Like, he looks better now than what he's ever done in his whole life. Wow. Yeah, and he's doing great. And I'm, I'm happy I'm happy to, 
the site he's doing great. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. And then, you know, back to 15 years ago, 2005, uh, Borling points Scott Lazar after just feeling as if he missed out on the jackpot with the uh, quad aces that he folded. Yeah, yeah, so now he's small blind, big blind, man in. He's picked up thing on his face, and all we can think about is how many chips he, he didn't win the hand before. Exactly. It's a sweet story, and then so much. King Nine. I've called your show. Yeah. I don't want to make a blush, that's for sure. Why well, am I only surprised that Lazar called here? I'm surprised how quickly he called. There was no need for this. I think he had a little no, rainbow. Don't worry about it. Oh, 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 oh. He's queen of spades. He'd love to see a blush. And it's Joseph Hashett who's trying to license at stake here. Gamble, gamble. Just got chips to play with. He's got pretty much conceded with him. And the fact that he'll still have 2.9 million chips to play with. He started the game with about 5.5 million. Stand I mean, talk about flopping him dead. I mean, that's just incredible. <laughs> Um, when right this happens, you know, German life is on the line in the main event of the final table. Is the adrenaline coming out of your ears, or are you able to enjoy the moment a little bit? I don't. I get that blocker. Oh, no, Donald Trump gold bars. Wow. There was no enjoyment. I was just in the moment. I was just focused, dude. Like, I just had. Yeah, I was just focused. I'm just playing to win, you know, and just making good decisions. And this is the first time we hear the Aussie, 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 oi, 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 chant yeah. at the final table. Um, wh what's that like? Because, you know, I'm from the Netherlands. People that are watching this are probably mostly from the USA. But if you're from a country that is not America, being in America and doing something great, having your he's country... He's got three million. Sort of an extra he can still like, play. He's been doing well up to this point. He's got three million. You can do this, Ben. Crazy, crazy. I, I can't put into words. Come on, Ben. Don't you believe I'll, in Scott Lazar? Strength. I believe in that. Okay. I believe in that. Hang on up now. Back to Raise on the button. Flag, Jacks. Call it. Call. I'll give you a gamble. And I mean, he's, he's called off with Queen 10. I mean, he's shaking his head. He's so frustrated. Scotty broke down in tears after this. Wow. Just from the, um, and he said to me, he goes, just the emotion of it all. I couldn't take it anymore. It's a famous quote now, him saying, I'll give you a gamble. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what he was he's, doing. He was gambling. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got 30% to win. He can pull this off. You know, Jack and then nine on the turn gives him a straight, right? Yeah, only how many jacks left? All right. Queen? One time, you know? Five runner to show. Ouch. Poor Scotty. That was it for Scott Lazar. Nation self destructed. <laughs> oh. So wonderful ended. A million and a half ships through the paint, though. All of a sudden, you're five handed. One less player to contend with. Obviously, eyes on the prize in this situation. Um, but more chips, even for Andy Black, who was still on your left. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. yeah. So, again, just uh, to blow up. I mean, there we had seen some pretty bad plays at the final table in earlier that final table of Madisau and also in 04, Matt Dean. For me, if you ask me, had the biggest blow up yeah. of, of that final table. So not a foreign concept. And heck, even some of the 03 uh, action was pretty bad, too. Amir Bahidi stands out as one. But uh, nonetheless, um, again, the fun part of, of this running back is that we get to see, again, some more of this background and analysis from the from the player, in this case, Joe Hashem. And again, I, I met Joe Hashem uh, two months ago in Vegas and spoke with him briefly. So it's even cooler just seeing him Talk about poker right here, having had that very uh, recent experience too. Yeah, and we both agree that like 05 is, you know, probably one of the best main events, if not the best main event. So yeah, yeah I wanted to represent this. It's my favorite final table. As you mentioned, I mean, Madisau getting crippled on the second hand, yet still managing to work his way up and, and you know, be in the fight and then bust. And then this, and then of course, Andy Black also kind of melting down. And meanwhile, Joe Hashem just playing short stack poker to a T and then making it to the end. Obviously, this set him up. This was the first step he really took to becoming a big player at this final table. So it's a big, big blow up for a lot of reasons. When we did that ranking of our favorite main events, you know, I I do feel like I, I perhaps overrated 2014 being in the S tier of 05 because when we, I look back at our old episode of, of that main event, I mean, it said like B plus or something. So we were, I guess, maybe just over uh, remembering the positives, and maybe ignoring some of the negatives. So really 05 for me is the top main event of all time. It will always be the best. There's maybe one or two episodes that are weaker than the rest of them, but really it's a pretty consistent ride otherwise. And uh, again, this this hand is spotlights an example of why it's a good main event. Yeah, absolutely. Moving on to my uh, fourth video in our in our 10 here, we have uh, Mr. Kevin Hart in uh, a, a cash game hand. I want to say about five years ago or so, 
Uh, just like raise your hand, and I'm sure you've seen it before, but here we go. Don't raise his alcohol. I didn't. I didn't commit to anything. Oh, our challenge is getting frisky with six deuce off. Yeah, she is. Daniel's out. What is it? You know what? I'm gonna come out and say it. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Kevin's right. He doesn't even know it. Going heads up to the flop. Mila's six deuce against Kevin's king three. Both miss. That's what I don't know. I, I can't do Bluff, Mila. Bluff like the wind. It's a six clean nine. The clean nine. Fine. I'm not fine. Four. I got it. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. We should bet a little more. Be careful. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't. Be careful. He's clearly running a block. Another barrel could get the job done. You could say at the start of the day it was her ambition to block Kevin Hart. Turn card. Ooh. Kevin now has a straight draw. Time for Mila to pull the trigger. She keeps firing. Now I'm getting nervous. I'm, no, I'm not going to block call. I'm sick of it. <laughs> that was kind of small. Kevin was willing to pay it off to chase a jack. Obviously, King High is currently the best hand. The river is a 10, carrying the board. 1,200. 1,200? I don't like the last card. Wait, why would Kevin say he doesn't like the last card? Is he just goofing around? <laughs> don't like the last card, raise. Kevin bluffing with the best hand. That actually makes sense. I don't like it. King High is not often going to be the winner. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Some more Kevin's board. <laughs> Look, you don't have to call. Oh. Look at FanDuel ads. FanDuel wants our money then. No way. I think about the relays, but I don't know how much. That's a different How much they have there? I think I got you. Yeah. I mean, I do that to move. I need all the money for that. Oh. Let me think, okay? Can I get one second? Yeah, take your time. I'm not going to let it take that. I have smoke. Get a foreman over here. My chance again. I always take the time and get Tell you what, if Mila pulls the trigger, it will work. I like where her head's at. We should have like a Kevin silence for 30 seconds. No. <laughs> no. That's, for that That's where I lose my advantage. Y'all think that it was just going to be the beginning? Like going to die off? No. I can leave this guy. Oh, silence. For the whole all in. All in. No. What's that? All in. You just said all in, sir. Ah! All in. That's what I heard. I mean, far, I mean, it could have been another yeah. German word, but it sounded like all in. I'm going to say that. Yeah, you can tell. Like you got like close to 20. Yeah. Close more than 20. Mila has bluff shot, which is six high. Kevin has the best hand with King High, but he has to fall. Why is he asking for a count? I don't know. Is it close to 20? You know what? If I'm giving it to anybody, I would want it to be you. I'll take it. How come on? Oh, I'm super cool. No, I got it straight. I got the most. Yeah. No. So I don't have to show my card? If you have. I have uh... Kevin, you're so stupid. I'm not dead. What's happening? King High. King High. Yeah, you went. I would love you, but it didn't work. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable with that. Yeah. What just happened? I don't know. I honestly missed my hand. I had a good time, that's why. I think I'm going to be sick. So Kevin thought he had a straight, which is why he called. Mila made a phenomenal block that should have worked, but instead she's been felted, and Kevin Hart has knocked her out of the game. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel bad. I feel very bad, and I don't want you to leave. So, because it's you. Anybody else, I don't do this. Anybody else, I'll tell them to kiss my oh. I'm going I'm to give you, here, let's give you 15K. Remember, and remember that comes from me. Daniel had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I have no ball. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. Classic. Classic. Like Kevin Hart is just funny, and then just it was a crazy. I, I, I'm still to this day not sure if I believe him that he misread his hand. I'm not. I'm not certain. Uh, I think he misread it. Right, but then he could just be trying to like you know donate some money because that's basically what, what he was doing in the end anyway. So um, it's a gray line there. If I if I ever meet Kevin Hart, that is my first question for him. Besides, how are you? Was it was it a lie or was it the truth? But. Uh, for me, probably top three most memorable cash game hands I've ever seen in my entire life. No, that's a great hand. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to the last ones of each of our respective five. Uh, again, mine are in no particular order. I know yours are in a bit yeah. of an order, but here we go. No particular this. order for mine, actually. Here so, yeah, go. this is uh, Matias Anderson from 04. And, uh, again, I just wanted to go sort of old school players who we haven't heard from in a while and uh, just have fun watching it. So this is why I picked you know, it. Is, here we go. My name is Matthias Anderson, and I'm from Sweden, and I'm 24. <laughs> but that's on a show my happy, happiness. There are other reasons for it, too. Mostly it is to relax and maintain focus on my goal. I, I can understand that some people might get upset or something, but I always shake their hands. I respect every player, no matter what the names are. But to win a tournament like this, you can't fear anyone. She must be like this. I have a cold. <laughs> 6,100 chips over to Matias Anderson. 
Well, Gus Hansen might have some trouble <laughs> against the Aces. Well, Cease to win titles with pocket Aces. Gus goes his way, but Chase is going to go all in with these babies. Over 112,000 chips. And Gus doesn't look too happy right now. Paul McCready now, who's got some work to do. He took a couple of big hits in the last two hands. He's got King Queen unsuited. I'm all in. Well, this might be the time to do it, considering his stack, but he'd hate to see Matias' aces. Well, it's not the best time, Lon. He's short stack, but two players are coming in front of him, and one went all in. All right, I don't have to think anymore. <laughs> I was just fooling around. <laughs> he took a stab with a 9-2. He got out. And now, oh. McCready sees the aces he's up against. Matias doesn't want to see anything, it looks like. He's the one who gets up, even though he's not all in. We've seen him get very anxious in these situations. Well, McCready got another queen, but still the aces lead the charge. There's life. That's a little lie. Little and we've seen this from a T throughout the tournament line. He sort of stalks the table, walks around, doesn't want to look when it's an all-in situation. Turn cards at six, no help. Come on with the king, let's go. Actually, only a queen will help him. And Matias comes back to peek at the river. And the river is a five. Anderson wins it. Oh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> all right. Okay. Matias takes up big pot. I couldn't look at that. I couldn't see the card. Whoa. What is he, a boss brass? Oh. And Paul McCready has been eliminated. Wow. And wait a minute, there's something happening at our feature table. Dewey Tomko is also all in on this round versus Matias Anderson. This so is on the money bubble, the sand. All right, with Combs, and be forced to split the 10,000 dollars <laughs> But Dewey just got a good break. He has a pair of aces now, and if he can avoid a deuce or a heart, he will stay alive. Why do we? Heart. Heart, deuce. Heart, deuce, heart, deuce. And the river card. It is a heart. Yeah! Anderson makes his flush on the river to steal the hand. And Dewey Tomko has been eliminated from the tournament. He and David Combs finished tied for 225th, so that means the $10,000 payout is split by the two of them. At our feature table now, we're looking at Matias Anderson with Ace King off suit. And he will bet 90000 Greg Raymer right. holds his hand over to Josh Aria. You have one seventh. He's got two sevens. How much do you have, brother? Well, 400. 405. All right. 275 more. I'm not sure why he didn't put Matias all in that situation. Uh, now, Aria going to war with the glasses. And the rest of the table running away in fear of Josh Aria's glasses. And finally, the action back over to Matias Anderson. And Matias is going to go all in with his ace king. Josh calls immediately, so the same difference. I'm still curious about the 275 bet, but Matias is all in. So it'll be Aria and Matias. Aria with the advantage going to the flop with a pair of sevens. Matias looks like he's preparing for his five o'clock whistle. Got a million dollar pot. And that's why Ace King is a great starting hand. <laughs> New pair for Matias Anderson. And the turn card, a queen of hearts. And now a seven, and seven only on the river would knock out Matias Anderson. And now the river card. It's an eight, and Anderson wins the hand. <laughs> I don't know if Josh appreciates Matias' end zone dance. So you know, Swedish, I think Greg Raver's glass just broke. <laughs> Part of the strategy, of course, is collecting chips, but you also have to be careful to whom you send your chips when you lose. Who do we ask? Josh just sent 500000 over to Matias, and it'll be a much bigger factor with a million chips. <laughs> Talk about lucky. Chris Ferguson has made survival an art form so far in the last few hands. When we last saw Jesus, he had over 200,000 chips. He's now down below 150,000, and he's got ace 10 right here, and he's thinking of betting. He's gone in with worse. He's been actually wearing the belt out going all in, and he does go all in again. 137,000 chips is the tally, and over to Matthias Anderson. How much is it? If you want to know how much it is, stop chewing first, then ask. <laughs> These online guys have no table manners. Well, they have a computer that tallies up the numbers for them. Well, he sloppily puts in the bet to call Chris's all in. And now I'm wondering, as the rest of the table looks at Chris Ferguson, do they respect him enough not to want to be the one to knock him out? Oh, they don't care who it is, Lon. If they have the cards, if you have chips, they want your chips. So it'll be Ferguson and Anderson to the flop. And Chris, a slight underdog to keep this remarkable comeback going. No ace, no time, five. 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 Five, five, five. During this survival streak, he'd been the favorite going to the flop, and he trails slightly here. Five. Three fives for Henderson. Yeah. Ferguson was able to survive his three earlier all-ins, but this fourth one looked like it's going to do him in. He could only survive with a queen and a jack for a straight. The third card is a seven, and that's going to end it. Chris Ferguson's luck runs out. Yeah. <laughs> Matthias Henderson did what three other players could not. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm not a religious man, but I hate to see Jesus go. He turned one chip into more than 200,000 in chips, but could go no further. We continue now with eight players at this championship table. And there, again, the screaming sweet, Matthias Anderson. Short stack, but nice card. Ace King, unsuited. And Anderson pushes all in with a 670,000. That was fast, but with his short stack and those cards, Matthias is not going to fool around. And Josh Aria will fall, as will Alcrux. Over to Greg Raymer. Who just knocked out Mike McLean and Raymer with Ace Ten. Oh, he's going to try to do the same to Matias Anderson. Matias will have company, and now he's preparing for his river dance. Uh, Raymer was a big underdog. To McLean. He's a big underdog here, but Matias 
Tournament life at risk. No attack, no attack, no attack. Now the flop. Anderson and Raymer. Queen, seven, nine, no ten in there. All sad. Matias is safe at the moment. The turn card. Jack, both now with straight draws. And Matias is not out of harm's way yet. Raymer can knock him out with a king or an eight on the river for a straight. Now the river card. Oh, it is an eight. Greg Raymer makes his queen high straight and knocks off a second player here at the championship table. So that's what Matias Anderson sounds like when he loses an all-in. So Fossilman living large, knocking off two straight players in hands in which he started as a big underdog. Anderson part of a big contingent of foreign players at the World Series, but the only one to make the final table goes away in eighth place. There you go. The, the, the legend who would, who would go on to win so many millions of dollars afterwards. Yeah, but I think mean, it's just like that he's having fun, that he's clearly like, you know, should he have gotten disqualified? Of course not. Like, it's not mean. It's not, you know, directed at anybody. I mean, we've again, we've seen with Cabral and with Will Kasuf and all these other people who do speech play to be mean. He's just having fun. And like, that's what I that's what I love about this compilation. Like, it's just poker at its fun and most purest, which is what I. It's yeah. kind of funny how, given all the action we saw with Mateus Anderson, that, that it was never really a hand that went all in pre flop. It was always yeah. maybe that's just a style or just the only highlights really of, of the all in pre flop. But that's a note I had. And also, again, like compared to say Havad Khan, who would actually prompt the Havad Khan role in the 07 to 08 gap in the in the poker world. Uh, again, it's it's again kind of similar, only Havad, Havad Khan definitely a bit longer as far as each like utterance of sound. So yeah. maybe that was the difference there, or maybe just as they changed the venue after 04. So maybe. You know, a new new venue, new rules. I don't know, but but I absolutely totally fine with me. If I was again, if I played against him and lost, I mean, I'd be annoyed that I lost the hand, but I wouldn't be more annoyed that like he made those celebrations and whatnot afterwards. I'd just be, I'd just, I'd be upset about with the hand. That would be about it. Yeah. And then, so the last, uh, the last member of uh, this top ten list is a uh, uh, Tony Hawk playing poker against Maria Ho in a uh, pretty crazy hand that I still don't believe happened in real life, but. It, the cards suggest otherwise. Here we go. And we talked about being in center stage, right? And how, you know, there's pressure there. But somebody like him, it, you know, he's uniquely qualified to handle. It's been a while since I've seen the sand. Well, it's not just based on your play. <laughs> Nevertheless, when you are out of your element, it does disrupt some of that comfort. So at one point, Tony Hawk was down. Just one big line during the six-handed action. And he got himself all the way back up to the chip lead, eventually finishing in second place as we pick up the action. <laughs> all club board, beating ace, ten, four, deuce. See, now this is an interesting situation. Because when a board comes out like this, the player who wins the pot is the one who wants it more, right? Neither player has anything, and they're both fighting for it, despite four clubs being out there. I love yeah. this kind of stuff. Tony has the wheel draw. That's the only thing we can imagine that he's calling with, but without a club. This is crazy. Seven high, seven high. Maria's trying to What's he doing? Oh, he just called. This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He just called it seven high. It's going to be good. Wait, wait, watch this. When she raises his hand. You called me with the only thing you literally beats me by a notch that doesn't like actually any pair or connect. I'm just trying to make you reevaluate your whole. Oh my God. That's too ready for like, Absolutely. Like, or something like, or a hoodie or something. Like, I don't know what just happened. That's I, mean, a I mean, I I don't buy that he read her for a certain. He's he just like, I just want to, I just want to call. I don't, I don't even care. And it just so happens this is the one in a hundredth time that it was actually the correct call. But it's so unbelievable, and I love Maria Ho's reaction so much. Oh, uh, it's just perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so again, that was like a weird like poker central charity thing that I just never knew about. I just stumbled upon this Tony Hawk compilation just randomly a couple of years ago when it was posted. I was like, oh my God, what this, this hand is crazy. It should it deserves its own video. It doesn't need to be the very end of a 24 and a half minute long video to uh, to be a part of uh, YouTube there. So yeah, that's, that's a fun hand. <laughs> so guys, that's that's it. That's um just 10 kind of classic-y, newish mixture of new and old sort of favorite hands or videos or sequences from for myself and Sam. Uh, if you guys have any of your favorite moments in poker history, obviously let us know in the comment section because, I mean, there's, even though we had it, we could easily make 20 more lists like this because there's just so much more uh, poker out there to, to talk about. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, Scotty wins blow up in 07 was, was huge. Uh, I mean, we could go just Mark Newhouse. I mean, just, you know, have a compilation of all his stuff, plus the two little mini docs that we reviewed about him way back when. 
uh, just, yeah, I mean, all sorts of different stuff online. It's a shame that a lot of these compilations and there are also series like Donk Busters. Or remember that one, Ben? Like all this sort of stuff used to be on YouTube and they've now been taken down from copyright reasons, which is a real shame because there was some good stuff out there. And, uh, you know, it's yeah. Rio's fault, I guess. I don't know. But uh, here we are now. It's, uh, it's this, the early part of September. There's the, the Super High Roller Bowl is kind of the next big marquee poker event, I think, coming up, as well as some of the Poker Masters uh, as the fall gets into full swing. And, of course, you still have the Big Ospi Bahamas and Paradise and Europe coming up to sort of see if anybody we care about in the state side things can travel a bit, maybe uh, add to the waste of total. You know, guys like Negreanu and Helmuth, I hope, will... Uh, Step up, uh, maybe not Helmuth, maybe he might, he might not go for the uh, Bahamas one, but I know the grind is. So I'm, I'm excited to see what my favorite players can do with uh, hopefully smaller fields. So maybe, you know, a bit better chance of maybe taking some, some bracelet uh, hardware home with them. Absolutely. It should be fun. And as always, guys, if you want to be a part of, of, a, of a future podcast of us as a, as a guest or just submitting your suggestions or what else you want us to talk about, we're always open for, for more ideas. We love everyone that continues to watch our content. You know, the Greg Weimer interview continues to, to, to do strongly on YouTube. So we can see you guys are enjoying that, 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 that we enjoy as much as, as you guys are watching it after we did the interview. And again, we're always looking for that next interviewee for that next amazing, you know, bit of time to discuss poker in a, in a, new, a new way. Yeah. And again, you don't have to be a main event final tableist or anything. Just got interesting stories about poker. We'd like to have you on. Uh, you know, the Mind Sport Olympiad. If you're involved with that, you can come on. Whatever works. Uh, we're, we're happy to hear from you. But until next time, guys, enjoy your poker, enjoy your TV, enjoy your poker on TV. Take care, everyone. Don't pull up like Lazar. Fold the Queen 10.